To complement its export promotion drive, the federal government has over the years set up various incentive schemes for companies whose business uh, is export focused. The incentives range from tax exemptions to duty drawbacks as well as other forms of grants. What the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, NEPC, on the other hand, has sought to make the non-oil export a significant contributor to Nigeria's gross domestic product. Of course, by facilitating exports to promote sustainable economic development, given that its overall strategy is to diversify the production base or productive base of the economy away from oil and to foster market-oriented and private sector-driven economy. But given the adverse effects of COVID-19 pandemic on the Nigerian economy, the Nigerian Export Promotion Council is cautioning the effect of the pandemic on non-oil export businesses, thereby safeguarding jobs and creating new jobs. While the launch of 5 billion Naira Export Trade Palliative uh, for Exporters in Nigeria, known as the Export Development Fund Scheme, that's EDF Scheme, the facility is aimed at increasing Nigeria's export capacity in the near term and export volumes in the medium term. Well, I won't be doing this alone to give insight into this and how Nigerians can take advantage of the Export Development Fund. I have joining me uh, live as Skype from Abuja is Executive Director, Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Mr. Olushegun Awolowo. Mr. Awolowo, good afternoon and thank you very much for your time. Good afternoon, Tolu. Nice to uh, be on your program again, and congratulations for a very good job on informing the public about business in Nigeria. All right. Thank you so much, sir. We take all of that. All of the team is saying thank you uh, to you. Uh, first, it's been a while we had you on the show, and a lot has happened even before the WTO DG came into town. We've seen governors, we've seen export focus meetings, seeing you all around, social media, everywhere. Can you just take us through and let us understand what's been happening despite the effects of COVID-19? Uh, uh, well, COVID was a, a big shock uh, to, the, to the system. It's something we, we really did not envisage or expect. Uh, nonetheless, I think uh, Nigeria's been able, luckily, to fare better uh, from from COVID in terms of the the health shocks. Uh, I think I'll just use it to also advise people to get vaccinated. Uh, really, uh, but the financial shock and the social economic shock is still what we are going to have to go through for a period of time. Uh, before the economy can fully readjust. Uh, and I think that is where government is focused on now. And that's what we, we really need to do. Start with now matters around the Export Development Fund scheme. I, I read this book. I read the book and a lot in this book. Uh, need for uh, more encompassing incentives and financial assistance and other stimulants for export promotion activities in the country. Now, take us through this process and what this really means for those in the export business. Okay. Um, in, in order to to alleviate. Uh, the, the sufferings of Nigeria from COVID. The federal government, of course, launched the Nigeria Economic Sustainability Plan, and that's a 2.3 trillion naira plan to to readjust the economy, really, to bring uh, uh, money into the economy to drive it. So part of that was uh, a 50 billion export expansion grant that we had uh, a lobbied for, and we are put in the program. So under that is the 5 billion uh, for the Export Development Fund. Now the Export Development Fund is one of the key incentives that the uh, NEPC is meant to administer for on behalf of its exporters. And, but we've never been able to do this, really because of lack of funding. We had some money. Uh, it didn't really 
materialized. So this time, we have 5 billion for exporters. We launched a grant management portal uh, to, to, to drive this. So it's going to be driven by that. You apply, you want you're an exporter. And this is mainly targeted towards SMEs and MSMEs because the really the big ones we've been struggling to give them the export expansion uh, fund, which many of them have, have, have benefited from. Indeed, the federal government has paid of, of the president has approved a total of over 350 billion accumulated from 20, I think 22 uh, up to date. And we are paying that off now through the DMO. But this one is, is fresh, is really for MSMEs and SMEs. And the idea is that, look, we have to encourage them. We have to get them to produce and be ready, particularly now we are going into the African continental free trade area. What is the army we are taking there? And I say we must create this army of exporters uh, to take there so we don't become a dumping ground for Africa. Hmm. Now, considering the bigger picture of global market uh, that the global market exposes us to, uh, we need to provide more support for MSMEs. I agree with you, exporting companies with regards to conformity assessments in areas of packaging, labeling, standardization, accreditation. I can go on and on. These are key to how smooth uh, the transition and acceptability of our products will be. How does this come to you? Uh, well, that is uh, that, that is that is indeed true. Uh, we've been battling with uh, rejects, with uh, 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 meeting standards, you know, uh, from all across the world, which is really interesting. But you see, as Nigeria transits from exporting raw materials to now processed materials, this is the challenge we have to go through. And we're facing it. Our exporters are facing it. Uh, states are joining in. Uh, we're working with the Ministry of Our Greek uh, all across board because now it's really about traceability from farm to the table. And a lot has to be done uh, in order to meet those standards. But we, we, we are not daunted by this. And indeed, Nigeria is prepared for this. We're going to be certifying many companies. In fact, we're working uh, already with many of these companies to get them certified ready so they can export seamlessly all across the globe. And that is where packaging, labeling, etc., comes to mind. Now, uh, let me just give you an example. Recently, we worked with the Jigawa State Government and Nowako, a company doing sesame seeds, who are able to certify farmlands in Gumel, local government. And for the first time, we have certification, uh, organic certification for our sesame seeds. So all across board, what the export expansion uh, program is going to be pre uh, uh, presenting to us, uh, the opportunities that are going to be availing from that is uh, the total many of our products, the products we have chosen under the zero oil plan. Uh, you know, we have 22 products we have chosen and we say if Nigeria produces increased production, productivity all along these sectors, then in, in but no matter of time, we'll, we'll get to where oil is uh, uh, providing a foreign exchange for Nigeria because that is really the challenge we face in this country now is how do we generate foreign exchange apart from oil and that is the the goal i also saw one of your meetings i think with the dg uh, of uh, world trade organization our own uh, Gozio Konjo Iwela. Uh, you know uh, seen a lot about empowering women and um, you know creating that space what's more kind of conversation are you having uh, at the moment to actually also straighten ties with us with regards to the advantage that we have at the Nigerian at the WTO? How would that also help us enhance export trading? 
Uh, well, it's good. I, I congratulate uh, Nigeria that we have a candidate there. But you must understand that uh, Dr. Ngozi Okunjewela is not going to be working only for Nigeria. <laughs> of course. Uh, she's, in fact, a representative of, uh, mm -hmm. of uh, the total bracket of companies that make up the WTO. And it's by consensus they govern. But n nonetheless, uh, we, we've, we've had... Um, uh, a, a very good relationship with the WTO, particularly through the International Trade uh, uh, Center, which is a major uh, uh, prosthetal of the WTO. So we've been working with the uh, International Trade Center. The International Trade Center really is the mothership of all trade promotion agencies worldwide. So we work with them. We signed up to their She Trades initiative that is to bring women uh, to global export. Uh, we're one of their major partners in driving that. So with that, we're doing so much training for women, uh, women-owned businesses, uh, women-owned businesses in the export uh, sector. So we're able to train them, get their companies ready, and take them to the global uh, global market. So I think uh, Dr. Uh, Willa was very happy and surprised when she was briefed about the work we have been doing with the WTO, uh, uh, with the International Trade Center. And when she came here, we were able to demonstrate that for her. She saw many of our women uh, uh, entrepreneurs. She saw many of the things. And really, I must tell you, Dr. Tolu, uh, I'm so proud of what our women are doing, you know, and, and uh, the major pride for me in the export chain, apart from the big companies, you know, because a woman entrepreneur is is the is the one you need to work with. They get things done, hmm. you know, and they're focused. And I'm really proud of Nigerian female entrepreneurs. I, I think I, I agree with that. When you empower a woman, you empower a nation. <laughs> That's what's being said, and I think that is true. Now, let me ask you this question this way. I am an exporter, and I want to take advantage of the EDF. What am I supposed to do? Okay, uh, first, it's simple. First, you go to, to our website, uh, and uh, www. Uh, uh, NEPC.gov.ng. Uh, you you go to the website and you will see it there. Uh, first, you have to be an exporter. Uh, you have to have an export license from NEPC, and that's also simple. It's everything is online. It's a seamless process. You apply, you get your certificate in uh, in less than forty eight hours. It's done for you. Then you apply for the EDF, and you go through the series of questions that it takes you through you know your what what area are you involved in what uh, aspect of help do you think you need now when you feel all that uh, and it, it, it sails through then you get an email from us that your application has been received we're going to consider it now the next thing we do for you is that we actually have export enablers we call them these are uh, some of our retired staff, uh, some uh, uh, experts in the export business, some that have helped us on our zero to export training program. So now the portal uh, is able to map you out, you know, based on the, the sector you are interested in, the portal is able to map you out to an export enabler. The export enabler now gets in touch with you and then takes you through the process. Because what we are, we are trying to do, we are trying to equalize opportunities, uh, not results. Because we know we, we are going to get different results from different sectors and from different exporters. But we want the opportunities to be the same. Uh, we want you to go through this. So once you are mapped with an exporter, it becomes an and holding experience for you, uh, the, the enabler. It takes you through the entire process. And what we want is that we don't want anybody to fail. We want you to qualify. And the enabler now recommends to, to us, uh, the board of trustees, 
that is running this program. Uh, we, in turn, now recommend it to the beneficiary subcommittee under the under the steering committee uh, chaired by the Honorable Minister, uh, directed under the uh, Economic Sustainability Plan. So from there, once you sail through, then I assure you, you will, you will receive your, uh, I call it the Buari alert. You will receive it, and then you can uh, start uh, exporting. Uh, I think I also need to diversify at the moment and start my body to control of the processes first. But, but on a more serious note, sir, um, what about conversations around uh, promotion campaigns in foreign markets and, of course, role of value addition across board? Because if we look at COVID-19 again, it highlighted several loopholes and opportunities in the global market space. Hmm. Uh, well, for in response to COVID, uh, we presented a work plan uh, to the uh, to the government, uh, which was approved, and we have so much under that work plan that will really help Nigeria to transit into an export economy. Indeed, when I I sat with uh, the president, uh, President Buhari, and. Uh, to talk to him through this. And one thing he mentioned, uh, first they liked the the hashtag we're using for this program, which is from pandemic, pandemic to prosperity. prosperity. And uh, we said we need to move Nigeria from pandemic to prosperity. But one thing he added for me, and immediately after the meeting, I called the team and we created the hashtag, was that, Shagun, we need to save jobs and create jobs. And he said, look, we have to look at the existing companies. What did they suffer through COVID? Uh, how many people did they lay off? How do we help them to get those back? Because if you know, under another program the um, for MSMEs, the survival uh, uh, a program that's also being run by a ministry, where federal government is paying salaries for workers, for companies, helping them. Uh, to do that. So we said, he said it has to be the same thing, Shagun. You need to save jobs and then create more jobs. So we added that hashtag, save jobs, create jobs. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So when we want to help you, we look at your record through COVID. In 2018, you exported this much. 2019, you exported this much. But 2020, of course, because of COVID, this failed. Then you laid off workers. You know, how many did you lay off? Now, if you are, government is going to give you uh, some support, how many of those workers do you call back? Then, on your export expansion program, how many are you going to employ? So that is really key. And, and that's where you score more points in order to get more support from the government. You talk about uh, markets abroad. We've already identified that. On our zero oil plan, we identify the markets uh, both in Africa and in, in 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 Europe and in the world, as a matter of fact, and we're using the ITC trade tools that lets you see, you know, our our uh, our our campaign in Africa is going to depend on these ICT trade tools. I'll give you an example. Simple, it's not rocket science. We'll see what Ghana is importing from the rest of the world then we see what we can produce and just move it to the border to sell in Africa. And we take that with all African countries. We look at all the uh, economic uh, blocks in Africa, and that's how we're going to, to, to tackle that. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a whole new uh, ball game that we're trying to do. And I still maintain that the only way uh, for us out through this financial and social economic uh, burden that we've directed from COVID is for Nigeria to become an exporting nation. First, we increase production, productivity, all across sectors in Nigeria, and then we, we export. Okay, let's wrap up on this note. Uh, what's your forecast? Let's look ahead for the export space. Uh, we have challenges. I don't want to dwell on them. Uh, you know, local production mm -hmm. and current production demand ratio from infrastructure to power to yeah. storage. What are you looking at and what new sectors uh, do you also think are gaining fresh grounds at this time? 
Yeah, yeah. Well, the the my only answer to that really, and this is what I also told Mr. President. I said, look, let us implement the zero oil plan. Hmm. Uh, even in the zero oil plan, there is a market to root uh, survey what we put in there, and we said these are the roads. These are the infrastructure. This is the rail line to build. Because it must always lead to transporting things, uh, you know, to moving goods. You know, I cannot produce in Castina and then cannot move it to a port in Lagos or Calabar for export. You know, it, it, it is crazy. Then we look at our border markets. You know, how do we... And, we, and part of the work that is going to be done is also on border markets. We look at the the one in Oyo, the one in Castina, and we're going to see because if we can really formalize that informal trade, we're going to be getting to the figures we want. Now, I also said, look, Mr. President, set a time and a date for this, that when Nigeria can move to become an export-driven uh, economy, and he said, what I thought, said, I said, look, I will say 10 years that Nigeria must be able to earn 30 billion, at least 13 billion dollars from non-oil export in 10 years. Now, when you go back, when President Kennedy said America would put a man on the moon, at that time, NASA had no plan. But he set it and everybody galvanized towards it and it became a success. So the same way we and we're gathering momentum, we're getting, you know, the uh, Nigerian Economic uh, Council chaired by the VP. We were uh, after the presentation of the zero oil plan to them. They inaugurated the National Committee on Export Promotion. It's a net committee chaired by the governor of Jigawa with other governors and other ministries. That uh, and the idea is go and drive the zero oil plan. And we're we're working towards it. We're working with the states on the one state one product, it's not limited, but we're saying at least every state should give us one product that we can export. And we really need to create that uh, uh, that uh, export drive and zeal within all aspects of our economy, Nigeria, so we can earn foreign exchange. Now, the sector you, you, you spoke about, uh, it's really, uh, that is the uh, services sector. And that is huge. It's a one trillion dollar sector, and Nigeria is perfectly poised, you know, to take advantage of that sector, particularly uh, in the African continental free trade area. And that's what we're doing, working with the ministry uh, to also uh, implement the Nigeria Industrial Revolution Plan, uh, which is a game changer and will be a game changer in the history of this country. Executive Director, CEO, NEPC, mm -hmm. and Expert Promotion Council. I thank you very much for spending your afternoon with us. We don't take this for granted. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you come up to bring us up to speed as, uh, you know, exporters start to access all of these funds. And we know what's yeah. playing out with regards to that. That's very important for Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Olu. All right. Enjoy and your And please uh, greet the rest of your team for me. All right. And next time I'll be in your studio. Okay, we'll be expecting <laughs> you live. <laughs> All right, we guess everybody in Abuja too. Take Thank care. you. All right, there. Yeah, you've heard it from the man, the number one exporter in Nigeria, Mr. Dushegun Awulo.